unveil for you one of the five most frequent sounds of English. Today my goal is to assist you if you're struggling to create a very clear S sound. Many of my clients are from a Spanish or Chinese, either Mandarin or Cantonese speaking background. And as a result, they can struggle to create a really clean and sharp S sound. The S for English is strong, so don't be shy. If an S sound distorts, what usually is occurring is that the tongue is being poorly positioned. To create an accurate S, we have two options. The very first option is to position the tongue very cleanly behind the bottom teeth, like so. Our second option is to lift the tongue and elevate it and make very clean contact behind the top teeth. Nothing should come out at the sides in terms of the tongue. So that would look like this. Quite tricky to see the differences between my tongue placement because obviously the whole purpose of creating a clean S is for the tongue to be concealed and hidden either behind the bottom teeth or the top teeth. If my tongue comes out at the sides or out at the front, or if I've got some sort of friction and slushy sound coming between the edges of my cheeks and the tongue, I will create what we refer to as a lisp. A lisp is technically a speech deficit and it's really going to have a strong impact on your intelligibility, particularly since S is one of those very, very common sounds. It happens in so many words. Now, if you have concerns about your accuracy, there is a really dinky little trick that you can use. Get yourself a pocket mirror. In the mirror, you're going to track whether your tongue is visible, either at the sides of the mouth or the front of the mouth, and from that you'll know if the sound is in error. So let's first try positioning the tongue at the base of the mouth behind the bottom teeth. And I'm going to monitor my tongue position very carefully, making sure I'm watching my tongue in the mirror. S -s 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 Now that for me feels quite comfy and as I did it, I noticed that, you know, at the sides here there was a little bit of um, exposure of the tongue but nothing to impede or impact on the airflow moving forwards so that there'd be a hissing quality like <laughs> or something like that, heaven forbid. So if you see mine very closely, you can see a little bit of tongue there but we don't want this. Now, let's test whether the position is better for you at the top of the mouth. Get ready to lift your tongue uh, and track with the mirror as to whether the tongue is going into position and whether you can see it or not. So I'm just going to try that now. This one's a bit harder for me always, so I have to take a bit of care. Great, so hopefully with the mirror, you'll be able to stabilize and create an accurate S on its own. There is absolutely no point trying to step this up to word level if you cannot make the sound successfully on its own. So drill that on your own. There's one final thing I want to show you with the S sound for English. S is present in many languages of the world to a differing degree in terms of air pressure. For Australian, British, South African or American English and all the other variants of standard English mainstream accents, it's really important that the airflow is moving forwards like a rocket. Okay, so I'll lose a little bit of my head as I show you this, but basically just track movement at my abdominal area as I produce an S sound and you'll see that there's so much force and effort that I need to invest with my breathing mechanism in order to guarantee this really strong, sharp and precise quality. So just watch this from this region. I'll show you at a word level. Sarah. Simon. Sick. So there you go. Who would have thought that the S sound is also released with the abdominal muscles plus the tongue? Don't forget to use the mirror. In the meantime, I would strongly recommend that you visit 
the Voice Science website. On that site we have tailored accent reduction tips for many different language backgrounds including Russian, German, Thai, Vietnamese, Cantonese, Mandarin and so many more. You might find some really interesting suggestions that you can start applying. If you found this video helpful, please subscribe to the channel. And if you have any questions about aspects of English pronunciation, don't hesitate to send me an email. These are my details. Otherwise, get ready for next week when I go into detail about the ch sound for English. I'll be posting content next Thursday, ready for you to start the day. Until then, take care. Ciao.